Hi, my name is Timothy, and this is a video essay on Tokyo Story. When I mention Japanese cinema, what do you think of? Yakuza films? Anime? Samurai films? Well, for me, I often think of the golden age of Japanese cinema, specifically the period where three great filmmakers led the way in furthering the arts of filmmaking. Today, I will be focusing on my personal favorite of the three, his name, Yasujiro Ozu. In the year 1953, Ozu directed what many consider to be his masterpiece, Tokyo Story. Written by Ozu himself and his frequent writing collaborator, Kogo Noda, the film stars Chizuru Ryo, Chieko Higashiyama, and Setsuko Hara. With a minimalistic plot about an aging couple who travels to Tokyo to visit their children, the film has worldwide acclaim and was voted in the director's sight and sound poll of the year 2012 as the greatest film of all time, surpassing that of Wells' masterpiece, Citizen Kane. Now, why is that so? Well, let's take a look. Firstly, the use of the camera in the film is very unique, breaking most traditional Hollywood conventional methods of cinematography. It remains uninfluenced by the father of film himself, D.W. Griffith which emphasizes on subjective cinematography. However, Ozu's own form of cinematography is very plain and simple, lacking the grandiose tracking shots and subjective angles. Instead, he often shoots from a very low angle, which this form of shooting is coined by critics as the tatami shot. Through this, Ozu further emphasizes on this composition and framing of the camera. Also, very rarely does the camera move, in the entire film, the camera moves only twice. And instead of the industry standard of over-the-shoulder shots for dialogue, Ozu uses frontal medium hit shoulder shots with often mismatching eyelights. Ozu's composition is simple but profound. In the film, he shoots within narrow confines, placing his actors in the background and the set in the foreground, placing emphasis on the household instead of the characters showing the simple daily lives of the characters as they clean up the house, walk, etc. He often shoots from a medium or long shot, and very rarely with a close-up, showing the audience all the characters together and how they interact with one another, rarely highlighting certain actions or expressions of the character for dramatic emphasis. He places his faith in the audience that they will be intelligent enough to catch the small actions and interactions and understand the objectives and goals of the characters about the use of subjective shots. Within the film, rarely are dissolves, wipes, or even fades used as transitions, and only cuts are used to transition between the scenes. Ozu uses shots of environments, like a lantern or a view of the sea, something mundane to introduce the audience to the next scene. And unlike most conventional Hollywood dramas, which make use of overwhelming, dramatic music to emphasize emotion of the character, in Tokyo Story, many dialogue scenes lack any score, with music only used during scene transitions. Yeah, arigato. It is also worth noting that Ozu enjoys using the rule of thirds, employing them in his long shots and transitional shots. Through this, he adds much more depth in his shots, truly making every frame in the film a painting. It is through this simplistic and anticlimactic filming style that Ozu forces the audience to view the scenes through an objective perspective thus allowing the audience to further appreciate the subtlety of his scene compositions and the actor performances, rather than having the audience see the emotions of the characters through dramatic close-ups and background music to highlight emotions like most conventional Hollywood movies. He ignores immersive storytelling, not respecting the 180 degree rule and often reversing camera placement and disconnects the lines of sight keeping the audience at bay, allowing them to watch equitably, which allows them to understand the feelings of the characters and thus to relate and connect with the characters at a far deeper level. 
Tokyo Story addresses numerous social issues that not only applies to Japanese society but applies to universally to most modern civilizations. These social issues are still relevant and important even to this current generation, which is amazing considering that the film is already more than six decades old. It talks about the often exploited conflict of the children and parents, but focuses on the commonly overlooked aspects, such as the disappointment of parenthood and the growing change of children as they slowly mature and gain their independence. All these themes are shown in Tokyo's story through an unbiased and subtle lens. It lacks the melodramatic flair that most contemporary Hollywood and Asian films would use to create drama. But the core of the film lies deep humanism and emotional distress, remaining eternally heartaching each time I watch it. In conclusion, I highly recommend the film Tokyo Story. It is simple and elegant, with an uncomplicated plot tied together with the exemplary use of cinematography, mise-en-scene, editing and sound. Ozu has truly transformed the simple everyday things into insights of society and its people, thus deserving of the title as one of the greatest filmmakers who has ever lived. To end this, I shall repeat a quote by the great film critic Roger Ebert. Sooner or later, everyone who loves movies comes to Ozu.